Guys, this is Garth Holman, and welcome to uh, Engaging Students in Remote Learning from TeachersForTomorrow.net. I'm going to go into Edpuzzle and have you create your account, um, show you what's in the program, and show you how to add students using Google Classroom emails, links, or codes. The last tutorial we'll do on this is how to make a video, publishing it, and uh, assigning it to students. So Edpuzzle, as you saw in the first um, little tutorial, is really a software that lets you pick a video, add questions to it to check student comprehension. You can ask three types of questions in it. You can ask uh, multiple choice um, discussion questions and then what they call notes. So I guess notes would not be a question. It's more like a statement or uh, explanation you might give. I do explanations and I do multiple choice. I do not do the extended response or discussion um, because I want this to be quick and immediate feedback for students for formative assessment. Do you understand the basics? So let's just get in and get started. I mean, you can click read more and see all about all kinds of things, but we're going to go ahead and get started. You're going to go to sign up and you're going to pick a teacher and you're going to log in with your Gmail. I'm not going to do that um, because I already have an account, but it's going to ask you some things. Are you a teacher? What school do you work at? Um, even if you're, uh, uh, let's say, a private school teacher, if your private school doesn't come up, you can either add them or pick a school very close. Um, so just follow those directions. I'm going to go ahead and log in as a teacher, and I'm going to use my Gmail and get into my account. So I said that the goal here today on this one is I want to show you um, what's on the page, um, how you can um, get students into your class. So the way this works is your home page shows general trends in education, what's going on, like what people are doing in Ohio. Um, so you can look at any of those. These are all ed puzzles that somebody's turned in. You can see this one has 24 questions where this has three. Um, that's a 16 minute video with three questions. This is a three minute and 50 second video with 24 questions. Um, so you can kind of see and you can watch these and, and really let's just, well I'll show you in a different place, but you can make copies of these if you like them. Curriculum is gonna show you what they consider to be like great content. So there's content for middle school, elementary, high school. You can go in and look at, at the things in um, different classes. You know, so maybe you teach, I don't know, uh, you know, PE and health. I don't know what would be in here. And then you could do this. I don't know. There's said puzzles for all the sports. So there's a lot there. Second thing, once you get a, because I taught at the university for a long time, it actually has me still tagged with this account to the university. So everybody who builds up puzzles at the university, they're here. So I can go in and say, you know, I'm going to be teaching something on the Great Depression. And here's a 14-minute video with 22 questions. If I click it, I can make a copy of this assignment. Now, you can see there's a lot of questions in here. But I'm sure this is a professor going, but I can make a copy. Okay, so that made a copy into my content. So now I have a copy and I can edit that. So we'll go back to content. I'll show you that in a few minutes. There's also channels you can look at. These are all the ways you can bring it in. So you can type in a specific thing and there will be Ed Puzzles people have already made. It doesn't mean they're good, but they're there. You can go to YouTube, which we'll use YouTube in a minute. There's Khan Academy, National Geographic, right? TED Talks. And these are all videos that have already been made and you can search their whole database. So if you want to search Sir Ken, let's see if Sir Ken Roberts comes up. It does not, but should. Um, I don't know what this is really. Oh, I have a title in there, so it's not showing you all the videos. Um, so, or you can go to Crash Course. So there's a lot of videos already done. Let's suppose you, um, well, we'll do that later. I have my content, and I also have my grade book in class. So let's go to my content first. You'll notice now I have this. I made a copy of somebody else's. Um, Without going too deep into this, I can edit this and make it my own now. So I can take her questions and decide whether I want to use them or, or make changes. This is a much longer video that she trimmed. But I'm just going to finish. I'm not going to show you that yet. The other piece is your classes. So you can create a class by adding a new class and creating a new class. Here I could enter remote learning. And I could just say description, uh, TFT, remote. Oops. And I could say create. Now, to invite you, I have a couple options. 
this would be if they're in your classroom every day. But here's what I would do is this link you could copy, email, you could post it onto a website, you could put it in Google Classroom. By them clicking, it will join them into the right classroom. You can share it through mail, but I typically take the link and put it somewhere. That's one way to get your kids to join. As they join, um, this will populate with students. Right now, there's no students because there's nobody here. The other way I can do this, if you have a Google Classroom, is I just import it and it's selecting all my classes that I have under Teachers for Tomorrow. Now, if I was in my school account, I would have every class period. So I can literally pick a class, and I don't know if there were any classes in this, but I import them. And um, there were no students there, so I'm going to import another one just because I need you to see something come up. So, I, I, oh, I didn't do, I don't know, let's just import them all. Somebody will have a class in it. It goes and finds my Google Classroom and imports all of my students. Now, I don't know which one their students. Now, I don't really want to show those because it's not really appropriate. But you get the idea. They're all in there now. So now I could start assigning content to that class. Um, so if we go back and look at what our goal was for this one, um, creating your account, we did that. What's the program about? We added students using Google Classroom, a link, email, or code. Um, the other thing we looked at here was making copies from others. Okay, So that's this tutorial. We'll pick up with making the videos, publishing them, signing to your students in a few minutes. Talk to you soon.